Yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, it's for you so you can complete your thug life videos in the style. <laughs> Now my question is, uh, I grew up um, in Egypt, obviously I'm a Coptic Christian, suffered from persecution. So I came here five years ago and uh, I realized that um, a lot of people here are easily offended um, and, <laughs> and uh, they haven't even like been through like Like people much. burning down your churches, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, um, like a lot of discrimination that I've faced and all that. And I understand there's uh, a little bit of discrimination, maybe some racism here in, in the United States, but the left makes it as if it's like really a huge deal and it's like like Saudi Arabia or something like that. So my question is why, the, especially the younger generation here in the United States are so easily offended and I'm going to say it's soft. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, the, as, as I said in the speech, I think that because people have not been taught what it means to be a good human being, and I think being a good human being means essentially taking responsibility for your actions at root, uh, it's, it's much easier to perceive yourself as a victim. It gives you an easy out. Things are bad in your life, well, just blame somebody else. You know, the, you're not succeeding, someone you know isn't succeeding, it must be due to some societal obstacle. Now, as I've said a thousand times, and I'll say a thousand more, if you can show me a specific instance of discrimination happening, then I'm perfectly happy to stand next to you, as everyone I'm sure in this room is, happy to stand next to you and protest it. But instead what we get are broad generalizations about racism in American life. There's no way to fight that, and it's really just virtue signaling, because then as soon as I say, well, you know, I don't see evidence of broad discrimination in American life, so oh, you're ignorant. Oh, you don't want to look it in the face. You're not acknowledging your white privilege. And it's like, well, no, I, I like evidence for my propositions. And if you are going to suggest that all of America is racist, then they need to answer your question, which is, no, like, why? <laughs> Where are you seeing this? Uh, uh, there, there is virtue that has been attributed to victimhood. And when you take away somebody's victimhood, they feel as though you have attacked their identity, which is one of the reasons I think that I get protested on campuses, because I say so often that if you're a woman in America, you're not a victim. If you're a black person in America, you are not inherently a victim. If you're a Jew in America, you're not a victim. If you're LGBT, that doesn't mean you're a victim. Right? You have to show me how you were victimized, and then we can talk about whether you're a victim. Um, but people's feelings are, are easily offended when they have invested their entire meaning in being a victim. And as I say, you can, I, you can invest your identity in, I'm a hard worker, or I'm a good person, or I'm a person who tries to fulfill what God wants of me. Or you can invest your identity in, I'm a victim of society. And however somebody threatens your identity, uh, you're, you're, going to be, you're going to be upset. And so if I threaten your identity as a victim, or you do for saying, uh, you know, you're not, you're not a victim, uh, then, then you're going to get in hot water with all those people. Thank you. Thank you.